Now let's focus on HTTP response times. I've opened up the trace file called tr-http-pcappernet101.pcappng. And the first thing I want to do is I want to hide this DNS time column. So I'm going to right mouse click on the DNS time column heading and choose hide column. I'll be adding a column in a moment for the HTTP response times. But first let's take a look at what goes on in this trace file. We have somebody with a dual stack host who wants to go out to www.pcapper.net. So there's the IPv4 address request, the A record request. There's a response and there's the AAAA record request, which is the IPv6 address request. The client obtains the information, it obtains an IPv4 address only, and the client makes the SYN, and we see the SYN act coming back, and we see the act finishing up the three-way handshake. There's the client's GET request to get the root of the main page, and an acknowledgement from the server, and we see a redirection. So this server is sending us a redirection saying, see other, and if we expand the HTTP section, scroll down a little bit further, we can see we're being redirected to a subdirectory called home. So we expect to see the client go out and load that next or request that next directory. And sure enough, that connection tears down. We see a sin, synac, ack, and then we see the request for home. Now we want to know how much time does it take between the get request going out and the actual response coming back. And we expect to see a numerical response, just as we did a moment ago with that uh, redirection. We saw a 303 coming back. But in this case, we see the get request going out and we don't see that response code right after it here. We do see the server responding, but we don't see response code. Instead, we see TCP segment of a reassembled protocol data unit. And that's because we have TCP reassembly enabled right now in Wireshark, and that's the default. So first, let me show you where the response code sits. Inside of frame number 18, I'm going to go into the HTTP portion of this frame. There we can see the GET request, and there's the host. And if we scroll down a bit to the bottom, we'll see the response is in frame number 52. Okay, we're on frame number 18, and it says the response is all the way down in frame number 52. And there's a hyperlink, so we'll double click to jump to frame number 52. There's frame number 52 where it says 200 OK. But actually, that's the end of the download of the home object that the client requested. It's not when that actually occurred, that 200 OK actually came much earlier. But because we have reassembly enabled in Wireshark, it's putting the command at the end of the entire download process instead of where it actually resides. If we look inside of this frame, we can see that Wireshark has a, an area that it says time since request. That's our HTTP response time field. And it's showing us that the time since the request is 1.8 seconds, which is really not very fast. We can see the request is in frame 18. And remember that these are in brackets, so these fields don't actually exist inside the packets. The problem is, is that this is not giving us the time from the request to the beginning of the download of that file, the actual response time. Instead, it's giving us the amount of time from the request to the end of the download. We really want to know what the response time is. When did the server start sending us what we asked for? How long of a delay was it before the server responded with what we asked for? So we've got to change our settings here. First of all, I'm going to hop back to frame number 18. And in frame number 18, I'll be changing the setting so that instead of seeing TCP segment of a reassembled protocol data unit, or PDU, we will actually see the response code showing up in the packet in which it actually resides. So we'll do this by selecting the TCP header, right mouse clicking, going to Protocol Preferences, and disabling this Allow Subdissector to Reassemble TCP Streams. Now things look a little bit different. We can see now packet number 18 is the get request and 
Frame number 20 is the response packet with a 200 OK. Now if we look in frame number 18, we'll see that it hyperlinks to the response packet in frame number 20, not all the way down to 52. And in frame number 20, when we look at the time since request field, we see it's 1.78 seconds, still not very fast. But we are able to see that it's the amount of time between the request and the response is very high, not the downloading process time. It's actually that the server was slow in sending this response back to our client. And once we have that TCP setting defined that way, we can right mouse click on this time since request line and apply this as a column. So now we have a column for HTTP response time, but the title of the column is not going to help us. It just says time since request. So I'll right mouse click on that column heading and change the column title. I'm going to change it to HTTP time. Now that I have it as a column, I can quickly sort this column and look for large delays in time. So sorting it from high to low and then jumping to the top of the trace file, I can see that in this trace file I had a response time of 1.922 seconds as well as that 1.798 seconds that we saw before. So I have some pretty high response times in this trace file. I'd like to know any time we have a response time greater than one second in HTTP communications. So let's build a filter expression button that we can just click to find high HTTP response times. This response time column is built from the response time field, which we can see down here lower in the HTTP header. If you look down the status bar, we can see that the syntax is simply HTTP.time. So using that syntax, I'll type in HTTP.time greater than one in the display filter area and I'll build a button from that by clicking the Save button. And then I'm going to name this new button HTTP greater than one. And then I'll click OK. I'll clear out this filter and set my ordering back to the default. If I were to open up a trace file now and I want to know if I have any large delays in HTTP responses, all I need to do now is just simply click my filter expression button for HTTP responses that are greater than one second.